So you've just got yourself a big shot camera, maybe from eBay or some, from a friend or somebody else who knew you were into film photography and said, hey, check out this old camera. Andy Warhol used to use one. I am gonna talk about the key differences between one version and another, okay? So this is the back of the big shot camera. Here's the two different models. Now this one here says, keep rollers clear. So if you look down inside, you'll see there are rollers up in here running along this side. Over here, we have the spreaders. The spreaders are two metal plates that are rounded and smooth on one side and apply pressure as you pull the film out to spread the developer evenly. The aficionados will tell you that the spreader is less reliable and tends to jam. So as you've probably heard, you cannot use a Big Shot camera without specifically magic cubes. These most well known from GE, but also plentifully uh, available from Westinghouse and a couple of other makers. They are often referred to, as you'll see on this Westinghouse package, for X-type cameras. So what does that mean? So here's a magic cube, and you can see it's got a, an X up on the top. And if you look on the bottom, you see that there is an X, one fin on each corner. I have some regular flash cubes, but these are not as bright as the magic cubes. The magic cubes put out a much brighter flash, which is what the big shot needs, because if you look at that long, that long barrel on the big shot, it uh, has to get light all the way from the front, uh, that little plastic lens in the front, all the way back to the film plane, and that's uh, long distance. So you need a brighter light. If you look at the top, any magic cube is gonna have an X-type pattern on it like this. Flash cubes will have some other design, but not an X. The difference between magic cubes, you have an X type configuration on the connector, and the uh, flash cubes have a circle with a cross or a, a plus sign. Here's my big shot. Uh, magic cube sits right here, and if you look around the front, it goes through this diffuser, which has, it's basically clear, but it's got little lines all around through it. So the little rippling lines out from the center, concentric circles, it turns the entire area of the diffuser into a flash, basically. So you have more even lighting on the subject. The video is assuming you know what pack film is, you know how to uh, generally get a hold of it, you know how expensive it is and how rare it is. So you know that each exposure in here is worth between 10 to $15 just for one exposure at this point. So this pack here is dated from 2018. So uh, this was supposedly refrigerated and uh, should give me an excellent result. Uh, you will find that there are two tear points right here. I don't know if you can see them. So just grab one and rip. And of course they say to do this in subdued lighting and I'm already screwed because I've got nice lighting on top of uh, this whole set that we're looking at right now. So this is what it looks like and you notice that all the, uh, the film is feathered over right here, okay? Uh, ready to be loaded. So basically you have to pop this clip off from these here so that you can open up the film bay. My camera uses the, uh, the spreader inside. I've had no problems with it at all. So there's, there's a rectangle area here, and the film has to slide into this area to be properly situated. It's kind of foolproof, really. So you slide it in, pop it down. So the film fans out and just rests, just like that. So this is the pack film sitting in the film bay, ready to close the door, like this. Okay, you don't do anything. You leave it hanging out just like that. Bring our clip up and snap it into place. That's it. If you look on the bottom of the camera, there's a handle right here, which is meant just for film loading. Okay, so get your fingers under there, okay? And what you have to take out is this dark slide right here. Okay, so all you do is you pull this out. That's it. That's your dark slide. And the film is now unwrapped and ready to go. So if you look at the little paper tab sticking out, number one, first exposure, ready to go. So the next thing you're gonna do is put your magic cube in. Here's my good, my good face, face forward, big shot camera loaded with Fujifilm FP100C, 
and we are ready to take our first shot. So the next thing to talk about is how to focus. Basically, you've got a 39 inch focusing distance that is fixed and precise. At 39 inches away from the subject to be in focus, these two images from here and here will align perfectly and you'll see it in a little rectangle that I'll show you in a moment. The reason you have to do the Big Shot Shuffle is there's no focusing knob on the camera. There's no way to focus it. You just go closer and farther away from the subject till it lines up. All right, focusing on the Fuji FP100C and the adapter sitting in front of it, watch how the top edges of the double images come to align when they are in focus. See that? And now I pull back a little further and I get the adapter. Done. Now here on the grid, let me just show you how that works. I pull away 39 inches and it goes in focus. If you have some pack film you wanna burn, Get the big shot, shoot it as it is. It's incredibly satisfying and, and consistent in the results. You can also shoot horizontally with it, you know, by turning your camera like this. Okay, so you can take horizontal big shot uh, photos. I'll show you an example the, at the end of this video. Uh, when you're done and you don't want to spend any more money on pack film and you want to try something else, you can get your big shot converted to run with Fuji Instax Wide which is readily available film and much less expensive.